Hello everybody, this is Davide Biocchi from Italy. Thank you again for being here with me for this uh, incoming week. So today is Monday. So first of all, I want to start with you uh, showing the difference between the uh, crude oil, the red line here, and the brand, so the uh, North European oil. So the, the situation is that, as you can see, the charts are really very similar. These are uh, based uh, on daily charts. But as you can see, recently, the price of oil collapsed more than the price of a brand. This is because after the Fed statements, they decided to, uh, let me say, help all the companies that are involved in the business of oil in US. So these companies probably did not close, let me say, uh, and they continue to extract barrels and barrels and they have problems with the storages. That's why the prices collapsed down and that's why we have seen a strange situation on the crude oil last week where we have seen prices uh, for the physical delivery of May uh, going below zero, exactly minus 37 and something. Uh, the problem is that uh, there is a strange situation. They don't have enough storage to put the barrels of oil uh, that they are uh, taking out from the ground and uh, uh, people do not want, companies do not want. So they don't have to deliver, they have simply to storage, but the problem is that all the storages are full, they're filled, so it's a it's, it's completely strange situation. Uh, I expect that for the next month, uh, the financial side of the contract will do the best to avoid to roll over at the last minute, so they will uh, try to avoid to have again a strange situation like this one on the uh, on the uh, oil that we have seen for the delivery of May. I think that it will remain uh, for years as a, as a remembering, you know, for us. But uh, I think and I hope it will not happen again. This was not connected to reality. This was only connected to a financial problem that there was a, a, such a big open interest. They have to close because they don't want the physical delivery and the price collapsed down because of an absence of real uh, demand in the book, of real bid in the book. Okay, so again, let's remain in theme connected to the, uh, connected to the uh, uh, oil. So let's go and see something connected to the, uh, well, let's, let's transform it in candles. So this is uh, uh, something that is connected uh, with the uh, with the uh, crude oil uh, country that we can say it's Canada, Canada. So this is Canada, and as you have seen, we have seen this movement recently this year. But right now the price is now trying to consolidate around some levels. So if we go if we go more down, and if we uh, go down and see, okay, we could easily understand that the price will remain around these levels. So this is the minimum of this congestion, uh, 138 and something, and this is uh, around 1,143. Uh, uh, this is the, the top. So uh, I think we will continue to see this price up and down here uh, during the next uh, during the next day, something like that. This is my ex expectation, and the breakout of this box, as we can say, could show us something really something really interesting. So let's switch from this uh, uh, from this currency to the uh, European and uh, worldwide index. So let's have a look in the very beginning at the S&P 500. Um, mainly, this is a very uh, interesting situation because uh, there was uh, a rebound that went on, and right now around the uh, price of uh, 2,850 and 60. Okay, more or less. We have a resistance. It's it's really clear here, okay. and this is the real resistance that we can see. Uh, it will work in the next day. Let's see. Uh, let's see what is going to happen on this uh, uh, interesting interesting index. But uh, uh, let me say that more interesting than this in the from the US, US side is the Nasdaq, where I can see a potential uh, head and shoulder. Um, re reverse the shoulder, let me say. Uh, if, if we look like this, okay, we can see easily that we have a quite uh, uh, evident head and shoulder here. Well, the head is very big compared to the shoulders, but 
this is not so important and we can see that right now around here we have a neckline so the uh, resistance that we have more or less a little bit less than 9000 points is really important i don't care about the target of this uh, uh, of this figure okay uh, quite important but i can see that we have the choice if we will overtake this level to reach the previous maximum unfortunately we know that uh, the uh, run of the nasdaq is uh, let me say uh, uh, is guided mainly by some very important stocks uh, considering that uh, it is something like five six very important stocks that are let me say um, making the move of the of the of the nasdaq itself so it's not all the market going up the average in us is that the stock after the coronavirus are done 28 percent globally average but we have some very heavy uh in this uh, uh in this uh, in this indices that are let me say literally literally making all these indices moving up so i think and i expect that the market can even overtake this line but uh, be careful because uh, only a few number of stocks are really performing very well not all okay not all evidently um and uh, well uh, we don't have the same situation in uh, europe than uh, in uh, uh, other countries as you see right now we have something like a v formation potential v formation on the nasdaq not the same is happening on the european indices let me say that if we have a look at the uh, dax uh, for example we can see that the reaction is not the same one uh, the reaction is really more similar to an l okay is not like a v but is very similar to an l like this okay this is more evident and if we continue to go down we can see that uh, uh, also the uh, European indis indices that we know as the Eurostock 50 is uh, really even more similar to an L again. Okay, let's see this. And then if we go down again and we see the uh, uh, FIB, so the Italian future, it is even right more similar than an L. So this tells us that uh, the situation in Italy is not doing so good. We are still in the lockdown and we hope that starting from next week when we will uh, uh, switch to phase number two uh, we will have a possibility to recover a little in terms of economy uh, to be honest if we look at the market uh, volume traded are very thin very poor um, expectations here are for a reaction of the economy but uh, uh, for what is uh, my experience around here and for what i see in the street economy i think that uh, we have time to wait before we can see a recovery so uh, be careful in uh, investing on the italian index because uh, uh, the rebound right now is not doing so good as uh, in other uh, as in other countries and if we consider this okay it's quite interesting to see also the complete pictures picture connected also to the yield of the uh, of the um, of the bonds Imagine that right now we have minus 0.36 for those concerning the Germany Bund and for Italy we have a yield that right now is 1.79 so we have a spread between our BTP and the German Bund that is 225 basis points that is a quite relevant and important spread um, but uh, last week it was even worse but uh, Finally, on Friday, we have uh, the rating from, we receive as Italy, the rating from S&P 500 rating agency that maintain uh, a, a stable situation uh, in Italy as before. So they are, they are not looking for the small figure, the short term figure, but they are looking for the medium term figure. And they say, OK, for the moment, we are not changing our uh, idea about Italy. And that's why today we have a, a spread that is a little bit shorter than before. Okay, so uh, again, uh, just let me say and just let us remember that this is the week of a central bank. We already had the meeting of the Bank of Japan, but we are already focusing on Wednesday when we will have the Federal Reserve uh, telling us something and then especially on Thursday when we at uh, half past two will have the press conference of uh, president christine lagarde 
that will inform us about uh, uh, the situation seen from the eyes of the ECB and we will know about uh, potential, let me say, actions that uh, this uh, uh, important central banks worldwide will uh, uh, will do. So, uh, I don't know personally, I don't have uh, typical expectations because uh, interest rates are at zero, so uh, it's only a question to, uh, it's only a question of uh, uh, understanding if they are, uh, if they are um, uh, planning some more QE, okay, or some measures, and in this case we will be happy to know. I don't know if I have some surprise, but I expect them to be back to be data depending. So I think that they will see whatever is coming from the economy data and then react uh, because of them. So data depending will be, in my opinion, the next figure that these central banks are going to. So it's really, it's really interesting. About that, it's quite interesting to see also the exchange rate between euro and dollar. So here we are. Uh, let's have a look and uh, this is how it's going on as we can see during the last day the volatility uh, went down the, uh, then we have a period with major volatility here after and in, in, in between the coronavirus situation but then the volatility collapsed down and now we can say something we are going like this so we have a support here around 1.08 okay uh, another one we have here at uh, a little bit of, uh, more than 106. These are the most relevant support. Resistance is one, uh, 110, and then here we have 111.70. Okay, so 111.70, 110, 107.80 exactly, and 106 uh, uh, and 10640 more or less. This is uh, what we can see from the chart, but. Uh, the, the main thing is that volatility is going down as we can see clearly here so we can expect the market to remain within 108 and 110 so more or less these are the fig this is the figure and these are the numbers so I think that uh, it can be all uh, this is Davide Biocchi from Italy thank you and bye bye see you soon ciao ciao